Yeah, we'll keep it that way. Because it's such a thin profile. Yeah, well, nobody makes it. <laughs> 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 It's Saturday evening of the Tour Down Under of 2024 and a factor rider is now in the lead of the race. And I raise that because Steve William races for Israel Premier Tech and he rides a factor bike. And sitting next to me is the owner of factor bikes, Rob Gatellis. And two nights ago they unveiled, or they formally unveiled, the track bike for the Australian Team Pursuit campaign for Paris 2024 and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. He's flying out of Adelaide very shortly, so I'm gonna speak quickly and uh, throw to Rob now. Rob, you've been busy this week, I know. I've seen you here, there and everywhere, but we've not caught up until moments before your flight out of town. But can you just give us a quick overview of the Australian um, teams association. I mean, it, if I could be so bold, we sort of could see it coming for a little while. Is that correct? Um, we started to discuss with Australian Cycling about two years ago about you know their track bike development for 2024 and 2028, um, and then it kicked off probably officially um, you know a few months after that. Obviously, the bike has to be raced um, one year prior to the Olympics, so it was really really a, a stretch. To get a bike in time for uh, for uh, I think it was in Glasgow mm -hmm. where they where they rode it the first time. Okay, now I uh, put some photos up of it yesterday. I didn't know have any technical details. I, I saw it. I didn't even get to pick it up. It looks fantastic. The paint works wonderful, but uh, it's all about going fast. And uh, I've been told it's the fastest bike in the world, and uh, that's I think a claim that every manufacturer <laughs> makes. Talk to me about uh, the development. Well, I, I think that, um, you know, Factor was, uh, we, we turned eight years old two years ago, or two days ago. Um, we originally launched here at the Tour Down Under. And, you know, every bike that we've done ever since gets better and better. Um, this was probably the first bike where we really led with um, CFD development. And so we probably spent four to five months just in CFD um, before we made any prototypes for the wind tunnel. And so this is, you know, a really big step forward for us having, you know, in-house CFD that we could then, you know, really learn quite a bit about where our product was and where we wanted to go. Obviously, the track bike is based on our Hanzo, um, which is, in our opinion, the fastest TT bike in the World Tour um, and proven by how many teams have bought it and tested it. Uh, and so, you know, that was sort of the base that we started uh, working on the track bike from. Can you tell me, is it developed in conjunction with the Australian team? Or is it, what's, what's the processes that have gone on in, in, in development? I think um, at the beginning of the project, we discussed um, as a group who had what resources. And obviously, um, at that time, uh, there was some very solid CFD resources 
available from the Australian um, cycling. And so we used uh, their CFD development. Um, we used obviously our manufacturing capabilities, you know, the factory that we own to produce the bike. Um, wind tunnel testing was done at our side in Toronto, um, just because of our comfort with the wind tunnel that we work with. We're there four or five times a year. So we know the consistency of the tunnel. And then, and then obviously, you know, Australia provides the riders that did a significant amount of uh, ride testing. I think we did about 50 iterations of carbon fiber layups. I think we gave the team four to five um, iterations of those layups that we then narrowed down to two, which we then narrowed down to one, which is the bike that they're currently uh, riding and going to race uh, next month. But to confirm, it's uh, not a sprinter's bike yet. You don't have that uh, in the works. Honestly, you know, we talked about providing a sprint bike and a pursuit bike for 24 because of the timing that was available. We just didn't have enough time to do two bikes uh, for 24. So the plan is that we just did the pursuit bike for 24 and that for 28, we will have both a pursuit bike and um, a mass start bike. Okay. All products at the Olympic level need to be commercially available. And then I've understood that the price of yours is quoted at around 60,000 euro or something along those lines. But that's just uh, gossip. Um, so can we go beyond <laughs> gossip, please? Sure. I think that, you know, everything that every sports team does is trying to, you know, work inside the rules to be compliant, but then you need to be a little bit more clever. So obviously this is a bike that's exclusive to the Australian Olympic team mm -hmm. to be used in 2024. Um, and so according to the UCI, however, it has to be commercially available. If you receive an order for it, you have to deliver it within 45 days. And so, you know, to be compliant, it had to be on our website, which it is, it is for sale. It is 59,999 US dollars. Um, but if someone ordered one, we could deliver it in 45 days. Uh, we're happy if anyone wanted to order one. Um, right after the Olympics, it will be commercially available for a price quite similar to our Hanzo TT bike as far as the frame set goes. And that is? Uh, I think that's about 6,000 US dollars. Okay, so we're looking at a, 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 a massive discount. <laughs> a massive probably. discount <laughs> after the Olympics. So yes. that's uh, all assuming that uh, it, it gets the publicity that you're expecting. So is it a cash component or a... Um uh, is the sponsor or the agreement with Oz Cycling, is that a sponsorship or a product supply? Um, we are a sponsor of Oz Cycling as well as product supply. So okay. we're doing both. All right. I know you've got a plane to catch, so I just really wanted a couple of basics. Uh, do you want to just give me a little overview of what it is that, uh, that, that makes the bike super special, if you've got a, an elevator pitch? Well, I, I think um, when you look at the bike, especially from the front, which is pretty much the view that everybody finally got to see here in Australia, because um, we had only showed a side view of it, you can see how narrow the front is. Um, the front hub is only 40 millimeters wide. It is using a flat disc in the front, a reticular disc in the rear. Um, we found that in our testing that that, that is the, the fastest approach. As far as the frame goes, obviously there's a lot of you know very special airfoils um, that are being employed there. Um, all of the CFD work that we did, we were actually able to do it with rider, with turning wheels. So we really took into account, you know, how the things interact together. And so, you know, we really tried to reduce, you know, the CDA as much as possible while providing a bike that can, you know, take 2000 watts of power transfer, which these guys um, can do. We were pretty shocked when we got the, we call it the keep out zones. Um, and one of those things is we had to see what is the size shoe of the riders. And one of the riders has a size 17 foot, which just shows you just how big and how strong these guys are. Okay, I'm guessing that's Kellen O'Brien, but- uh, Probably so. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I love the team pursuits uh, and you know that I love Australian cycling. So I hope that this, uh, this partnership delivers on, uh, on, on, the, on the, the objectives. For us, you know, we were approached by many federations. I wouldn't want to go through this level of energy to not win a medal. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for your time and uh, all the best for whatever comes next. Thank you.